Jesus kept me. Anybody know Jesus kept you? Look at your name and say, neighbor. I don't know about you, but all I know is Jesus kept me. When I could keep myself, Jesus kept me. Way over in the midnight hour. He kept me when I couldn't keep myself. He kept me when it looked like I was all alone. Jesus kept me. Tell the name of Jesus kept me. Ah, yeah. May be seated for a few moments. Thank you, Jesus. Because I could take off right now. Uh, in the midst of the storm, Jesus kept me. Nancy, I knew that was God. Hallelujah to God. There is a word from the Lord tonight. And the Lord spoke to my heart. And I never tell you anything that the Lord didn't say. But tonight, there is a word. I've worked hard enough and long enough for over 40 plus years in the ministry. And I'm not much over 59. And I think that I can have a few minutes tonight to say what the Lord has given me. To God be the glory for all of the wonderful things that God has done and is doing for me. I'm grateful and blessed to be among the saints of historical Louisiana First Jurisdiction. It is an honor and a privilege to serve under the auspices of our illustrious, praying, fasting, anointed leader, a man of impeccable integrity, Bishop James W. Proctor. Let's celebrate him tonight. I know you've been sitting, but I want y'all to stand and celebrate our leader. Put your hands together like you clapping if President Obama was in here. Our leader. Thank you so much. To the presidium of his cabinet, regional administrative assistants, superintendents, pastors, elders, ministers, our lovely first lady, Dr. Isora J. Proctor, all the women in the house stand. All the women in the house stand. All the women in the house stand. Let's celebrate our first lady. This is Historical Louisiana First Jurisdiction Women's Convention. Amen. God bless you. To all of our lovely first ladies that are here tonight, Amen, and I praise God for all of you 
And I give deference to our even international Church of God in Christ supervisor, our beautiful saintly mother, Dr. Barbara McCool Lewis. Amen. God bless her. I received a call this afternoon from one of the mentors from the National Church to give me what they was doing and praying for me on tonight. Amen. I thank God for Pastor Cuba and wife, Superintendent Frank Ford, for allowing me to serve with them. I say thank you to the wonderful hard work in laborers in the vineyard of ministry, district missionaries. Nobody like you. I love you. Thank you so much. You have embraced the vision of the Department of Women with prayer, support, love, and I celebrate each and every one of you for your outstanding participation in this first women's convention. And let me say to you, the best is yet to come. To all of the precious superintendents' wives, and as I said before, the pastors' wives, the elders and ministers' wives, the ABU leaders, the entire cadre of the Department of Women, I'm grateful to God for a blessed family. My two sons, Elder Dwayne Terry, Elder Christopher Terry, my two daughters in love, Malit and Bridget, my grandchildren, and they are all watching and praying for me tonight. To my special guests from Memphis, Tennessee, amen, from none other than Bishop, amen, Linwood Dillard's Church. Would you stand, my dear? God bless you. Missionary Alexander, God bless you. Amen. And some aunts, amen, that have come, and they're going to be coming. And to all of the staff who has made this convention successful, thank you, and God bless you richly. Thank you, Superintendent Lindsay, amen, Missionary Bolden. Our guest artist, the musical was awesome. What can I say about the anointed lady of gospel music, singer, musician, director, amen, Lady Malit Woods Terry. Thank you so much, amen, for stepping in. And the anointed ensemble, and oh my, my, these anointed musicians, thank you. In the house tonight, we thank God for our jurisdictional minister of music, none other than Elder William Clement. Let's celebrate him on the night. Amen. My staff and the others will be recognized at a special time before the close of this convention for a special presentation. So that's why I save you so for the good. Amen. You're going to be getting some wonderful things. What a gift to the body of Christ. My special guest, amen, Lady Nancy Armstrong. Wonderful. Thank you for allowing God to use you in ministry. Now let us go to the word of God. Pray for me that the word of God will encourage you and inspire you and bless you as you continue to be suited for the challenge. Will you stand for the reading of the word? Thank you, Jesus, from the reading of the word. From the epistle of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10 through 18, but I'm not going to read all of that. Mm. I feel Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel him. The apostle says here, finally, finally, after all that you heard, you've learned, and you've been through, finally, mm. after you've been criticized, Talked about mistreated. After you've gone through dark times in your lives. But in the midst of it all, God still left you standing. 
So, the apostle said, finally, after all this, don't you dare think about throwing in the towel and giving up. When you got saved and sanctified and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, don't allow time over the years to make you be cooled off and settled in a way in the church where you feel nothing. You act like you don't know nothing. Like you have heard nothing. He said, finally, my brethren and sisters to be strong in the Lord. And in the power, somebody shall power of his might. He says, in order for you to do that, put on the whole armor. Where is your armor? Where are your sanctified clothes? Ah, ah, my God. Don't allow the transitioning of the world to make you change clothes. In a demonic season like this. He said so above all. You've got to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And so let me close with this scripture, Ephesians 3 and 20. He says, now that, that I have encouraged you to put your clothes back on, now unto him, the auspicious God, the magnificent God, the healing God, the delivering God, the saving God, the majestic God, the God that sat on the circle of the earth and said, let there be, and it was. Now unto him that is able, somebody shout able. To do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power. Somebody shout power. That worketh in us. And this is the word of the Lord. You may close your Bibles. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Before you sit down, ask your neighbor, neighbor. Are you suited? for the challenge. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Are you suited? Y'all keep the lights up for me. Keep the lights up for me. Keep the lights up for me. You're doing a wonderful job. Keep the lights up for me. Are you suited ah, to face the challenges? Ah. As we face these challenges during this dispensation of uncertainty, spiritually, globally, and personal things that we are faced with, the body of Christ must become spiritually educated and motivated through the leading of the Holy Ghost. And put back on your clothes the armor of God. Then we need to understand that life isn't perfect after we accept Christ. There will be some heartache, some disappointments along the way. But in spite of all these ups and downs, ah, can we remain steadfast and stay suited for the challenges we face as believers? Ah, and I won't be long here tonight, but I feel Jesus. I'm feeling a little better here now. We must be equipped mm, beyond salvation huh? because you must understand in everybody's life some rain going to fall. 
Oh, as I always say, but after every dark cloud, the sun will shine again. Y'all help me out tonight. Talk back to me. First Peter 3 and 17 says, amen, that suffering for what is right. That's what it means to be equipped. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh, in the 17th verse, it said, For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Then in Hebrews 10 and 32, it talks about the persecution of the new converts. But not only the new converts, but we are being persecuted in all various forms. Oh, my God, whether we want to believe it or not. Amen. You have to understand that even the people that you sit beside in the church don't always have, amen, the right understanding about your destiny, about your past, where you come from. Sometimes folks that's talking need to be listening. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. How dare I judge you about your past when everything that happened in your life was ordered by God. God already has the blueprint for everybody's life. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. When you look in uh, 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 the book of Hebrews and you look and you look at all of the wonderful men and women that were left on Holy Writ, Everybody that was left there wasn't saved and sanctified and Holy Ghost and filled uh, and baptized and all of that. So, so, so you got to understand that you wasn't either. Uh huh. You may look wonderful and dressed up tonight, but baby, you got some skeletons too, and you got some things in your closet. Uh huh. And if God don't help us, we will not be able to stand. Mm, you may have on your suits and your dresses and your hats, your ties and everything. But spiritually, naked. Mm. The 32nd verse in Hebrews 32 said, But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were eliminated, you endured a great flight of afflictions. So, so many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord said, you won't be delivered out of them all. I, I, want, I, want, I want to talk to my brethren, the preachers that can help me tonight. Pastors, I don't understand how it is that, amen, people now, the, the parishioners in the church now, act like they have lost, amen, their voice. They act like they got laryngitis. When you put them up, amen, they want everybody to holler loud and everybody, amen, to run the aisle, amen, the praise team and everybody do the musicians play. But when you get up to preach, folk act like they got laryngitis. They act like they don't know where God brought them from and, 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 and look like if anybody ought to be praising God, it ought to be us. Look where God brought us from. Look at you where you're sitting up in here tonight. Look at us all over the world, everywhere. If it had not been for the grace of God, we wouldn't be here. I don't know about y'all. I said I'm not much over, you know, 59, but I remember cotton fields. I remember when I had to go to my grandmother and them house and stay there while mother and them go, amen, to the convocation sometimes. And we have to go out in the cotton field. And we didn't know nothing about no cotton field. And, and my, my grandfather would tell us and say, where y'all going with them kind of clothes on? So you can't go out here in that dew and all that stuff and picking up, hey amen, cotton. And then we tried to play it off, you know, like we're going to go out here and fill that cotton sack. And when we get, amen, that away it out, amen, my brothers with their smart self being done put a lot of stuff in that, in that sack. And my grandfather would say, uh-uh, this don't feel right. This don't feel right. This don't look right. Do I have anybody here not ashamed that you had to pick cotton? Then they would empty the sack. And all over that, that ground, Bishop, would be all kind of stuff. They done put rocks and stuff in there. And then my grandfather always kept one of them, them uh, 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 whips sometime that he wrapped one of them cows with. He would say, come by here one by one and wrap them right quick. He said, go back there and start at, at the beginning of that row. 
So, 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 I hear the Lord saying, don't forget where you come from. Don't allow others to do better with praising God than we do. Oh, my God. Honey, as long as you are breathing, you ought to be so glad that God left you here through this pandemic. You could have been dead and gone, but you are here. That's why I always said, baby, I ain't sitting by nobody that don't say nothing. You ain't that wonderful. Uh, uh, he said here, Matthew said in 13 and 19, said we are being tapped for preaching the word of God. Uh, and many folks don't want you to even hear the word of God. Folks tell you don't take all of that. You don't need to hear all that. You don't need to go to church. And I'm going to tell y'all something, and, and, and I, might, I might get in trouble after, but I'm going to tell you something. A fish can't survive out of water. Whether we want to admit it or not, I don't care if you got to have church in a shack. We've got to go back to church and get involved in church because you can see the residue of laziness that's over the church. And this is why it's so hard and such a pull to get folks to praise God. But when you go into the other folks' church, y'all ain't gonna like me tonight. They jumping and they praising God. You ain't got to set up and preach yourself in the cardiac arrest. They jumping and they might knock and shout like us, but they picking them up and putting them down. Amen. And they hollering and they hollering at they preacher. They hollering at whoever. They out of the aisle. But look like now that we dressed up and God done brought us out the cotton field. And he done brought us, amen, out of the shack. Amen. To condominiums. And amen. And we got a few different clothes and can do whatever we want to do. Got good jobs now. Amen. Look like our praise is gone. Look like we just naked, sitting up in the church, but on the inside full of dead men bones. Oh, my God. I'm going to hurry. I'm going to hurry. In the 19th verse, it said, amen, he said here, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, the wicked one, and catcheth the way that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. This is war, saints. Somebody shout, this is war. Salvation equals enlistment into God's army. Ah, we are Christian soldiers. Who is our enemy? Ask your neighbor, who is our enemy? Oh, God's going to snatch the cover off some pretensive people, pretend us. Talk one thing, but you speak something else out of your mouth. God don't get you about you better leave the preacher alone. You better get off the anointed. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. You better stop talking about one another. God said, I'm going to get you. Uh-huh. He's got a hound dog that's going to hound you down. Uh-huh. If I'm not talking to you, say amen. Uh-huh. Because God knows the heart in here. Because there's too much amen foolishness going on in the church. And there are some folk that's trying to do a takeover. But God said, I'm not going to put you nowhere until it's your time. Oh, my, 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 my. I'm getting ready to say something right here. Whenever you mess with God's leader. You're messing with dangerous stuff. Yeah, and there's some like that old the folks used to say, holler knee high to a duck. And already know everything. You can't know everything. How in the world, amen, you just got here. Even Jesus went through a little training. Amen. He, he wasn't born and just put in the manger and he got up, amen, out of the manger the next day after he was born Tell me, I'm preaching. If y'all read your Bible, amen, they went looking for Jesus when he was 12 years old. And Jesus said, in other words, I'm getting some training. He said, I ain't lost. I'm just, amen, going and doing what my father said. I'm just going about my father's business, trying to get some training. Ain't no way in the world that you're going to be on the top 
and you just got here. Yeah. Oh, my God. The challenge, the challenges we face, my heart goes out to the leaders, whether they're men or women, challenges where folk want to be, know everything. Pastors are trying their best. Oh, my God. Economy is not like what it used to be because you've got less tide pavers now. You less got less givers now. Oh my my. Oh ah. Oh my. This is why. Amen. We love we love social media. But honey, amen. Only folk that just can't make it do social media. But the church the church folk need to come back to church. Uh huh. Amen. Cause some folks doing social media ain't doing never putting a dollar on or whatever. Amen. But listen, you want best churches. You want, amen, good ministries. It takes, amen, hard work. It takes things to make things work. This is why we have these convocations. They are not just here for us to come and dress up and look good, amen, and say, well, I'm just coming here to sit in here. When we come to the convocation in the jurisdiction, this is historical Louisiana first jurisdiction. When we come together, we coming together to our Mecca. We coming together as one body. Oh, my God, we coming together to get together to hear what our leaders got to say to us. And then everybody that's been praying in their churches, praying in their homes, you ought to be so fired up when you enter the door wherever you are. If you got to have church in the school, baby, amen, on Monday morning, the school is sanctified because the saints been up in there. Oh, my God, if you got to go in a storefront, my God, you got everything so illuminated, fired up in there that when they walk up in there, somebody's going to say, I feel something, I feel something, I feel something. I never saw so many folk just act like, well, I'm just going to church and I, you know, I just... Whatever. Ah, who is our enemy? First Peter 5, 8 and 9, Satan seeks out who can devour. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, you may not think you got one, but you got one. And some got many. The adversary, the devil, has a ruined line walking about. I'm feeling better now. Ye. Seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Ah, this is war. Where do enemies attack? They attack the weakest links. The weakest walls, folks, that's not praying, but love gossip. Love Facebook. Love all of this stuff. Amen. I got to hear what's going on. He won't attack. Amen. So much. Amen. And when he do attack the strong people, you know how. Amen. To get him off. You know how. Mm, like they were saying, you know how to plead the blood. I know y'all looking at me funny tonight. Mm. But see, if you ain't got no power and you naked, uh-huh, you don't have nothing to fight with. You just dressed up on the outside. And this is why all of them bipolar issues going on in the mind and schizophrenic. That's going on. And you wonder why folk looking at you. And you just wonder why they sitting there and just looking. Won't move. You don't know whether they sick, whether they need to call somebody or what. That's why I get my purse, I get my Bible, and I want to move. Ah. It said here in Ephesians 6 and 12, this is what the meat is. Y'all can start praying. Give me G over there, brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said here, for we wrestle are not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. I wish I had somebody help me preach up in here. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. People holding high positions, but they naked. People 
people being promoted just because they pay tithes, but they can't catch the devil off of a gnat. You can't put babies in the pulpit to train adults. Y'all ain't going to lack me up here. Yeah. It ain't going to work. 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 You're going to have a gumbo church. Uh -huh. You're going to have folks that's like the Dow Jones average. They up today and down tomorrow. Y'all ain't looking at me. i never seen so many folk talking, I'm a preacher, I'm a missionary, I'm an evangelist. Hey, man, are you just as quiet, just as cool? You ain't got no anointing. You're stiff. You're wore out. Hey, man, God bless you. You ought to have. Some of y'all been have given license. I don't know how long. You ain't shouted since you got them. You need to turn them back in. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, huh? yeah, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What does this mean? It means we have a powerful enemy with many devices. He has rulers. He got little imps. Oh, my God. Just as soon as you get rid of one devil, hey, man, they got legions of devils. Uh, look at John Vine and say she's not talking about you. Oh, my God. He's got, hey, man, rulers, authority. They got authority. That they've been, hey, man, they've been assigned to attack you. They've been assigned to shut down your praise. They've been assigned to make you stay out of church. They've been assigned to make you feel depressed and feel despondent. They've been assigned to tell you that nobody loves you. They've been assigned to tell you to gossip and run your mouth. Oh, y'all ain't gonna hear me up in here. Oh, look at somebody and tell them, put your clothes back on. Oh, my God. Pagan leaders and in the nation still in darkness. And we got folks in that church, amen, that's supposed to know, amen, what the doctrine stands in our church. And this is why in the women's handbook now, amen, I want to speak to you missionaries over there. Praise God. Don't be calling my number all the time trying to ask me what you need to do. Get in that book and learn what you need to do. Read the book. Read the book so you'll know how to do things. You don't need to go to your pastor asking them what you need to do for the sunshine. Shine band. Get in the book and read it. You read everything else, get in the book and read it. Know how to treat one another. Every auxiliary band and unit, every circle, everything is in the, in the book there. And the book teaches you to stay in your lane. The book teaches you that all of us serve under the auspices of the bishop. No one in here is over the bishop. Don't make no difference about me being the supervisor. He can hire me and fire me. Y'all sitting up there looking at me funny. I must be on your roll. Uh-huh. I take orders from this man here. I respect my bishop. I'm down there let folks run and talk to me, talk and talk about my bishop. And God, that's why God gonna lock the jaws of some of y'all if you don't get your mouth off the bishop. Oh, my God, and you better not mess with me because I'm anointed. Oh, my, 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 my. And I know I'm in the house. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I can't say this. He said, yes, you are going to say it too. Because it's spreading all over our churches. It's spreading where there's rebellion. How dare you want to be on the payroll at the church and you don't want to follow leadership? You don't want, oh, y'all ain't going to lock me up in here. Oh, my God. You want to be paid at the church, amen, but you can't hardly play. Mary had a little lamb, but you want to have, amen, a salary. But don't want to be at Bible study. Don't want to come to Sunday school. Don't want to pay tithes. Don't want to do nothing. Amen, want to be a missionary, but can't find you with a flashlight. Uh, oh, my God. Uh. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. And here it is. Amen. Second Corinthians 10, 3 and 5 said, amen, our battle is spiritual. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are, are, are not carnal, but are, are they are mighty through God. Through the pulling down of strongholds. Oh, my God. And we ought to have power. Somebody shout power uh, to cast down every imagination uh, and 
and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And you ought to have power to bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. What are the spiritual attacks? Ephesians 6 and 11 said that you got to be watchful of the wiles of the devil. I can't hear nobody in here. Oh, bless his name. If you are saint, I'm talking to you tonight. Oh, bless his name. It said put on put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand. Somebody shall stand against the wild of the devil. In other words, you got to separate yourself. Oh, bless his name. Saints of God, that God have brought you out. Good God Almighty, praise the name of the Lord. You can't be amen if you used to smoke. You can't go back to being a cigarette sucker. Oh, my God. I don't care if it is your anniversary. You can't be drinking no shot of day. Y'all ain't gonna let me up in here. You got to put down the rum and the coke. You got to put down the tobacco. I can't hear nobody in here. Y'all must not be sanctified. You got to come out of that stuff. Lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. We talking about we want license, but you ain't even ready for license because you can't die to your flesh. You need to kill your flesh. You need to say, Lord, kill my flesh. Yes, kill my flesh. Somebody shout, yes. The reason why you can't get to the next level in God because your flesh is in the way. Sometimes you need to just hush. Just shut your mouth. Stop talking so much. My God today, people that talk a lot, lie a lot. I'm going to get to the good stuff now. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. He said, put on the whole armor. Somebody shall put it on. Oh, that you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. Oh, bless his name. He said, come out from amongst them. You ain't got no business in the tobacco store. Trying to go in there talking about you puffing and vaping. Oh, my God, you better go and get in that secret closet. The same one that Isaiah did. Wasn't no smoking going on in there. It was the Holy Ghost, the vapor of God in that room. Oh, bless his name. Come out from amongst them. Get away from in there. Strife, bitterness, hatred, gossip. Because the fiery darts of the devil, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Oh, my God, they may not kill you, but amen when you're fool with stuff. It gets on you. Y'all ain't gonna hear me up in here. Some of y'all attached to the wrong folk. Oh, my God, and that's why you can't praise. Because when your neighbor don't praise, when your friend don't move, you don't move. But you're going to tell your friend tonight, I love you, but I got to move away from you. Because where I'm going, I'm going to a higher dimension. I'm going to a higher place. Yes, I'm going. Somebody shout, I'm going to where Jesus is. Somebody shout, yes, good God from glory. I feel like preaching now. My God today. Holy Ghost, you got to get it right, get it right, you're naked in the Sunday school, you're naked in the YWCC, you're naked in the purity, you're naked in the missionaries, you're naked in the aspiring missionaries, put your clothes on. And he said this. Stand therefore, having your loins 
Gird about with truth. Satan fights with lies. Everybody standing. Get your, breast, your breastplate. And your feet shod. With the preparation of the gospel of peace. <sighs> Above all. Taking the shield of faith. I'm getting ready to do something in just a minute. The heart of God is grieved. Because we know what the book says. He said, how can you hear without a preacher? How shall he preach except I be sent? You can't let your mama call you. If God don't call you, so don't be wasting the time talking about I want license. And my question going to be to you, for what? And here we got unsaved women hurting. Men and women all over the jurisdiction. And some folks still carrying grudges. You can't forgive somebody. I don't care how loud you sing, how loud you hoop, you're tinkling cymbals and sounding brass. I like to refer back to my leader. My leader knows my character. People wanted me to retaliate with folk that did things. It was not personally to me. It was just trying to attack my anointing. My bishop would say to me, just pray and trust God. And then the Lord told me to be still and know that I am God. And the reason why I'm saying this now, so I can clear the record tonight. Don't spread a lie that you don't know where it was invented from. God going to hold us accountable for putting yokes around folks' neck that haven't done anything wrong. Don't get with other folk. If you've got a situation with somebody and God is in you, don't stay naked. Go to that person and say, I'm sorry. And then after you've done that, leave it alone. And then you stop talking about it. That's why my mother used to always tell us when we got married, Mother Proctor, mother would tell us, she said, don't come to my house telling me about you and your husband got into it. She said, y'all go back to the house and work it out. She said, because after y'all be done straighten things out, I'll still be around here mad and y'all laughing and having fun. The same scenario goes for the church. People be going on trying to get past stuff and you still bringing up dead bodies. Come out of the graveyard. I don't see but one undertaker here tonight. And that's Suvin in the fold. And when he take them bodies to the graveyard, he ain't going back out there and digging them back up again. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The Lord told me to warn you tonight. Leave the dead bodies where they are. Leave the dead stuff where they are. We are in a new dispensation now. And just let me say this. You cannot force the bishop's hand 
to do what God has not given him to do. And don't send your little imps. He didn't tell me to say this. God told me to say it. Stay out of his business. And the ones that's trying to tell him what to do, they just got here. Can't even pray their way through situations they're dealing with. God has given us a leader that's got wisdom. He may not move as fast as you want to move, but that's all right. Get somewhere and sit down. Go and pray. Women, stop nagging your husbands. Learn how to hush. Be still. You ought to know your husband enough to look at his face and say, he ain't want to talk now. You don't feel like being bothered now. Because you, you, you're not the boss. I don't, care. I don't care how much money you make. You can have as many degrees as a thermometer. You're not the head of the man. Y'all ain't going to like me. Men, I'm trying to help you right now, and I'm going on to my seat. Get you some backbone. And tell her, all right, now, listen, we ain't talking about today. We're talking about popcorn and peanuts. Just go on and go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go get your nails done. Go do what you got to do now. Go, go on, go on somewhere. And when your church members hear you fussing and nagging at your husband, who he may be your husband at home, but at the church he's your pastor. And you don't, you don't, you don't disrespect your pastor. You don't be talking, amen, all kind of stuff. Listen. Sanctify the office of your husband. My God. The membership is looking at you. Get your little self somewhere and sit out. Go and get your broom in there and sweep something or go in there and do something. Go in there and get your Bible, start reading uh, St. John 3, 16 something. You got women that's looking at us. They're looking at how we carry ourselves. They're looking at what we say. And then they think that's all right to go do that. And this is why they want to retaliate to their pastor. I don't care who you are. Meet me after church. You can meet me in office in there and talk to me. Mm -hmm. I can chew this cabbage twice. What we're doing, God says, you can't be naked. The next three months, you can't go into January half-dressed. Mm. Put on your clothes. Get your head right. My God. And stop talking about everything God said this. And God ain't speaking all of that. If God is sending a word, he's going to send it to your leader first. You don't need no prophet to come into your church telling you, hey, amen, that God said you go to the, Your pastor is your leader. That's the prophet of the house. Y'all ain't going to lag me up in here. I'm getting in real trouble here. Oh, my, 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 my. Yeah. And we getting all mixed up. Mm -hmm. You better go get you, your people back together. Get you a little Bible study. Get in that book. It's time now. Put some stuff down. Because God give you what's for your house. Women, stop reading all that other stuff. Get in that handbook. Read this Bible so you know how to carry yourself. And stop tripping over every little thing. Uh-huh. And I'm going to have some meetings. And we're going to talk about some things. And yes, I want this to go out because somebody else may, may get a chance to hear this. You don't put untrained folks in places where they become embarrassed and where they are not ready to assume responsibility. <sighs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And if you want a simple little text tonight, just tell somebody, you better be ready. The Lord said, you know not the day nor the hour that I'm going to come. Y'all people are dying. P young people dropping dead. 
so much violence. You can be laying in your house and a bullet come in your house. So therefore, we don't have time for foolishness. Y'all ready? Listen. You ought to be so glad to shout. You ought to say, God, I got a sore knee. But God, if I could just move one, just pick it up. I thought about Bishop the other day when we was in Memphis, Tennessee. Out on the dirt. I can't tell my age. I'm just a little bit over 59. We was out on the dirt there with two Wayne Smith. And y'all didn't know nothing about all of them. Oh, my God. All of those men of God out there. Y'all don't know about that. Just dirt. And superintendents, hey man, one of them will come by and just touch us. And they will sing, I got two wings. And we just hit the floor and my mother and them will start rolling in the dirt. But I know y'all don't rolling on dirt now because you don't even roll in your church. We've got to get back and put our clothes on. And when, oh my God. David did not just try to be an embarrassment to anybody. When Michael looked out the window and saw him shout, David said, you see my glory, but you don't know my story. David said, I was naked out there. He, and the Bible said that David shouted so until he lost his clothes and they saw it hanging off of him. If you was in that bunch with us in Memphis and at your church when you got saved, the mothers had to, had to tie us up. They had to put a sheet around us. That's where the sheets and stuff came in from. They didn't show no, no, throw those sheets over the men. They throw them over the women. Uh, let me say that again. They didn't throw no sheets over the men. They throw some sheets over the women. Let me say that again. They didn't throw no sheets over the men. They throw them over the women. Am I right? Women, talk back to me right quick. Bless his name because we had unsaved people that came in. And when they came in, the power of God, amen, hit them. They hit the floor. And you saw pastors taking off their coats and throwing it to the missionaries, telling them to cover them up. But what happened to us now? <sighs> no, 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 shut up. Mm. I'm not going to sing it, but I'm ready to go to my seat in just a minute. There was a little song said, if you got it, you ought to shout for joy. Mm. Tell somebody. See, y'all looking at me. Just ask your neighbor. If you got it. I got it. That's what I'm talking about. Come on now. Come on. Look. See, y'all ain't ready. That's what Bishop was talking about just a little while ago. Come on. Come on. If you got it, you ought to shout for joy. If you, you, you got it, you ought to pray the Lord. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. yeah. Do you have it? Ask them, say, do you have it? Why y'all just looking at me? Uh-huh. Ask them, do you have it? Anybody ever went?
went to Memphis and shouted at Memphis and I will make a y'all wasn't standing around looking like this I heard the Lord said tonight you need to get it back touch your neighbors and put on your clothes put on said, do you have your clothes on? Tell them, do you have your clothes on? Said, if you got your clothes on. Said, this time, this time, I'm going to show you that I got mine on. Because you see me now. But you just don't know what I've been through. This is why I'm praising God like this. Come on in here one more time. Come on. supposed to be touching nobody but I saw y'all touching folks today and when we was eating that good gumbo y'all was touching folks and going on y'all was hugging folks but I just feel somebody just need their hands laid on somebody just lay on your hands on the person next to you just lay come on lay lay your hands on them amen just lay that just just one person just lay one person hands on there just lay your hands on there too you will have enough power the power of God ought to hit you the power of God hit you want to get delivered here tonight. Somebody want to get delivered in the back. Hush up, I son, you old child. Now, now. Come in the old child, how about say, hey. Somebody want to get delivered here tonight. Somebody want to. Listen. 
they got them. That ain't scared to show somebody that you got your clothes back on. Just get out in the house and just do a shout. Just get out in the house. I ain't got all night because I'm tired. Get out of the house. I need somebody. Get out of the house. If y'all just do one shout, just do one shout, God said he's getting ready to do something in your church. Missionaries, if you do one shout, God said he's getting ready to do something in your district, in your district. Pastors' wives, if you do one shout, God said I'm getting ready to work a miracle. Sister Rogers, God said a miracle. Here you go. Come on. I got it.
Woman, the Lord heal ya. Man, the Lord heal ya. sister and that daughter in the hospital now, in the home. Touch that young man now. Push up out of the wolf seat. Touch Mother Nation now. Touch now in the name of Jesus. Touch Sister Dorothy right there in the name of Jesus. Lay your hands on her now. Hmm. Ah, I not see. Yeah, 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 God. Do it now, God. We need a modern day miracle. We expect to hear a victory report from Superintendent Rogers. We expect to hear a victory report from Lake Charles. We expect to hear a victory report from Superintendent Nation. I must tell Jesus. Everybody get $20 in your hand. All about my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, get $20 in your hand. He will kindly help. If you don't have twenty dollars, get ten. And just come and lay it on the altar, right quick, right quick. Just start walking. Just start laying on the altar. If they don't have the have the pen.